The following program has been made possible by the friends and partners of Christ for All Nations. My name is Daniel Colenda. I'm a missionary evangelist who preaches to millions each year alongside evangelist Reinhard Bonnke in Africa and across the world. At our gospel outreaches, we are witnessing an outpouring of the Holy Spirit that is winning astonishing numbers of people to Christ, one soul at a time. Time, time. The Lord is also divinely healing broken bodies and restoring lives to the glory of God Almighty. God, God, God. Now, I want to invite you to hear the gospel. See and experience God's miraculous touch and discover the mission of Christ for all nations. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another broadcast of Christ for All Nations. I'm Daniel Kalenda. It's my joy to be with you here today. Here at Christ for All Nations, our desire is not just to entertain you today, but we want to minister to you. This is our chance to interact with you, to pray for your needs, and to be a blessing to you. And so what I want you to do right now at the beginning of this program is to use that contact information that's there on your screen and send us your prayer requests. Let us know how we can agree together with you in prayer. Because at the end of the broadcast today, we're going to be taking those requests. I'm going to be laying my hands on them, and we're going to pray. And I believe that the Holy Spirit, the same one that's been healing multitudes in Africa in our crusades, is going to reach out and touch you right where you are today as well in Jesus' name. And I want to send to you something in the mail. This is not a gimmick. There is no strings attached to this. It's absolutely free. But in the book of Acts chapter 19, verse 12, the, the Bible says that special miracles were wrought by the hands of Paul because handkerchiefs and aprons were taken from the body of the apostles and laid upon the sick and they were healed and even demons fled. And we are uh, going to take that, that, that standard, we're going to take that precedent and appropriate it on your behalf. I wish you were right here in the studio today so I could lay my hands on you, but of course that's not possible. So the next best thing is that we're going to send this to you as a point of contact. And I believe the Lord is going to touch you and heal you and meet your every need in the name of Jesus. Now, before we get on with the program today, I want to share with you a testimony that absolutely warms my heart. You know, there is this disease that's very prevalent in Africa called sickle cell anemia. And I've seen how it destroys the lives of many young people. The doctors say that, it, that it's a very difficult condition. But here's the reality. In, in the kingdom of God, in the blood of Jesus, there is no limitation. God is able to heal this disease. He's able to set people free, just like he did for the little girl that you're about to hear from right now. When she was nine months old, we sent her to the hospital for polio ingestion, and we discovered the sickness. Her hands were swelling, and she was crying all of the time. I took her to the hospital, and they told me she was suffering from sickle cell anemia. I was so sad and disturbed. I had never witnessed this before. Because of the sickness, we had to go to the hospital twice a week. All of our resources went into caring for her. Before the sickness, she was very healthy, roaming and playing with other children. But when they diagnosed her and realized she had the sickness, she started shrinking and reducing in weight. Even eating became difficult. Sometimes she will be feeling pain in her body. At night, she will cry the whole night and won't be able to sleep. Because the pain she's going through is so severe, she couldn't even come out of her room. When she's passing through the pain, she doesn't even want to step on the ground. Just stay with me all of the time. She needed medicine. We were going to the hospital almost twice a week. When I see my baby passing through that pain and suffering, I wish God could exchange that pain with me. That way, my baby will be free from it. In the beginning, I was frustrated and confused. But a time came when I built my faith in Christ, that God can do all things. I know that I'm just flesh and blood and cannot provide everything for my baby. 
only God can. When I was coming to the crusade, I said, wherever God is, there is victory. So I have faith that my baby will be made well. For the past two weeks, she found it difficult to bend down and up. So last night, after the prayers, I told her to bend down. Let me see. She did. I told her to stand up, and she did all of that three times. I saw that God had healed my daughter. Take your mind off of your pain right now. Take the mind off of your infirmity and put it on Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Strength is coming into your feet, into your ankles, into your legs, into your back. Rise up and walk in Jesus' name. Want... This is your daughter? Yes, please. I, I heard she had sickle cell. Yeah, sickle cell anemia. And now what has happened? Now, first she can't bend, but now she can bend. Let's see, bend down, bend down. So she couldn't do this before? Yes, yes. She could not do that? Yes, but now she can do it. And so you believe she's healed now? Yes. I believe it. Hallelujah. Amen. Lord, I thank you for touching this young lady and for this woman. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. God bless you both. Amen. I'm going to stand on top of this building and shout to the entire world what the Lord has done for her. I'm happy. Many <laughs> are Hallelujah! God is great. <laughs> Amen. Indeed, God is great. Jesus Christ is great, and to him goes all the praise and all the glory. My friend, I want to thank you, because without your support, we could not go to these nations of the world preaching the gospel, praying for the sick, and seeing the power of God demonstrated in this way. It's your prayers. And it's your gifts that send us. So thank you. And if you just feel drawn today to become a closer part of this ministry, I want you to invite you to become a One Soul Partner. One Soul Partners are monthly partners that have gathered around the mission and the vision of Christ for all nations to plunder hell and populate heaven for Calvary's sake. And when you sign up today, I want to send you this very special CD that's just come out called Africa Sings. It's a live worship album straight from the Crusades like the one that you just saw where hundreds of thousands of people are lifting up their voices together and worshiping the name of Jesus. I know that you're going to be blessed. We look forward to welcoming you into the One Soul family. Here's how you can become a part. Become a One Soul sponsor with Christ for all nations and help build the kingdom of God. Your gifts will help the good news of Jesus be proclaimed by those who need it most. Make an investment that pays eternal dividend. Become a One Soul sponsor with Christ for All Nations today. Amen. And let me just be the first one to say thank you so much for joining us and for taking a hold of this mission with us to see millions of lives touched and changed by the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. My friend, let me ask you a question. Do you have a desire to receive the fire and the power of the Holy Spirit into your life? If so, the next few minutes are for you because I want to share with you a message that I just recently preached about the fire of the Holy Spirit, and I believe that it's going to be a great blessing to you. Let's have a look at that right now. I remember several years ago I was doing a crusade in a country. Let me be tactful here. It was a country where more than 99% of the people are, are of a different religion. And this particular religion is not a very friendly one towards Christians. In fact, in this country, many of them are radical, fanatical, religious zealots that will murder Christians as soon as you speak to them. We did a crusade there. I was told before I went, I, the, the pastors in America told me, they said, we'll never see you again. This is the end of your life. We did it. Thousands came out. More than 20,000 people over the course of the week came to hear the gospel. Most of them, the vast majority, were not believers. And miracles began to happen. Blind eyes were opening and cripples were getting out of their wheelchairs. It was glorious. And then a couple weeks after the crusade, I got an email from one of the local pastors that had been involved with us. He said, you know, 
you know how the situation is here, how persecuted we are. And he said, because of the persecution, we don't have a church building, and we don't even advertise the location of our gatherings. We meet in a secret location. And he said, we even put a guard at the door with a shotgun, just in case somebody tries to come and harm us. He said, we were gathered in our church. It was the week after your crusade. And he said, we were worshiping the Lord when that guard with the shotgun came running in to the building, and he was frantic. He said, Pastor, a gang of those armed men, those fanatical men, I saw them. They're walking towards us right now. Of course, the people were frightened. They, they knew how this went. The pastor very courageously decided to confront those men. He stepped out of the church building and shut the door behind him, and he stepped up to that gang. And before long, the pastor and the gang leader were nose to nose, eye to eye, and the gang leader said to him, we heard what happened here this week. We heard you had an evangelist come. We heard that he preached about Jesus and said that he was Lord, that he was God, that he was Savior. And we heard how people have received supernatural healings. We heard how some of, our, some of, some of the people in our village who were crippled are now walking. And some who were blind are now seeing. And he said, Pastor, I have a question for you. Would you pray for my sick friends? Maybe Jesus will heal them too. <laughs> Hallelujah! My friend, listen to me. What are the people of Jacksonville, Florida looking for? What is the world looking for? Are they looking for us to build nicer buildings? Are they looking for us to have more eloquent preachers? Are they looking for us to... A better music or better marketing programs? What is it that they want? I tell you what the church in America needs to hear what I'm saying right now. Because what we think is relevant to the world is completely irrelevant. We have just begun to look like them and sound like them and act like them. We never confront them. We never offend them. We think that we will win them by looking like them. Have you ever noticed that when you watch a, a weight loss commercial... They don't have 500 pound obese people telling you how to lose weight. But the church has thought that we can convince the world that they need what we have by looking just like they look. I tell you what we need. Elijah the prophet discovered it thousands of years ago when the people of Israel, God's people, were serving that false god named Baal. And Elijah stood up and he said, today we have got to make a choice. I say it to you, my brothers, my sisters, we have got to make a choice. If Baal is God, serve him. If money is your God, then serve it. If popularity and acceptance is your God, give your life to that. If partying and pleasure is God, then live for that. But if Jehovah is God, Elijah said, then serve him. And this was the test. Elijah knew his God, and he knew that the authentic God would be able to demonstrate his power. And Elijah said, meet me on the top of the mountain. Bring all of your prophets, 700 prophets. And I will stand there as one lonely man representing Jehovah. And we will find out whose God is the true God. You know the story. Those prophets of Baal began to dance and sing and tried to call down the fire. Elijah was falling asleep like some of you are right now. Not even a puff of smoke from Baal's altar. I tell you, it's a pretty wimpy God that can't even produce a puff of smoke. After a while, Elijah stood up. He said, guys, look, I hate to interrupt. It looks like you're having lots of fun. He said, maybe, you know, I understand. Don't worry. Maybe Baal is locked in the bathroom. It's okay. I understand how it is. These gods, you know, they're unpredictable. Maybe he's gone on vacation. But Elijah said, Gentlemen, before it gets too late, before the sun goes down, let me pray. 
I don't need a long time. I don't need to scream and shout and cut myself. All I need to do is speak to God because he's living. Elijah said, Lord, hear me. Let these people know that you are God and that you've turned their hearts back to you in the fire. The Bible says it fell from heaven. It consumed the sacrifice and the wood and the stones. It licked up the water in the trench. My friend, our God is a consuming fire. And what the people of Jacksonville, Florida are looking for, what the young people are looking for, they are, they're not looking for pyrotechnics. They're not looking for rock and roll music. They're not looking for great entertainment. My friend, what they're looking for is the reality, the demonstration of the power of God. And when they see it, they will fall on their faces as the children of Israel did and begin to declare, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. Say amen. Hallelujah! This burns in me. We need revival in this nation. We have a whole generation of young people that don't know what it means to experience the Holy Ghost. It breaks my heart. I grew up in the Pentecostal church. I told you yesterday, I'm a fifth generation Pentecostal preacher. I think, Pastor Gary, that means, I don't think you can be much more than five generations in Pentecost. <clears throat> it pretty much goes back to the Azusa generation. And I'm not saying that Pentecostals, especially the old-fashioned Pentecostals, were perfect. You know, Pentecostals are people. They made a lot of mistakes. I saw the mistakes. There were some things that were good. I remember those prayer meetings like I talked about last night. And I remember seeing people get filled with the Holy Spirit as a little boy, like my son's age. And of course, I didn't realize what was happening during those times. I just knew people looked funny whenever the Holy Spirit would come on them. But my favorite was old grandmas. You know, <clears throat> this was the day that the grandmas still wore their hair up in a bun. And I, I don't know how they got so many bobby pins into that little bird nest back there. But whenever the Holy Ghost came on them, those grandmas, those sweet, precious, dignified grandmas just got wild. And I remember watching them fall on the ground and roll. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? They would roll on the ground. And out would come the bobby pins and the hair would go everywhere. I couldn't believe how much hair was in those little buns. And I would laugh as a little boy, ha <laughs> ha, grandma. The people used to call us holy rollers. That's why, because they would roll. I can still remember people driving by my house, rolling down their windows and shouting at us saying, that's where the holy rollers live. Doesn't happen much anymore. We Pentecostals, we pretty much look like everybody else. But people said to me, why are you Pentecostals so crazy? Why do you dance in church? Why do you sing with such energy? Why do you shout when you preach? And I, I think it's pretty easy to explain. Do you want me to explain it? Well, let's think about it like this. Imagine that after the service today, you're on your way to Danny's. And on your way, you see a man on the side of the road who is on fire. I'm not talking about Holy Ghost fire now, okay? I'm talking about the fire fire. Like the kind that comes from matches and gasoline. And you see him burning there. You pull over to see if you can help. And you approach that man. And to your surprise, the man looks at you and says, fine afternoon we're having. Thank you for pulling over. You, you've noticed that I seem to be engulfed in flames. I'm a bit of a pyromaniac. Things got out of hand this time. <laughs> Sir, if you would be so kind, would you please call the fire department for me? I'd be ever so grateful. I will sit here patiently on the side of the road and wait for your return. Is that how a burning man would act, yes or no? Of course not. Burning people do crazy things. They get a little bit excited sometimes. 
Sometimes they shout. Sometimes they dance. Sometimes they roll on the ground. Sometimes they jump. They shout. They say, ah, ah, I'm on fire. I'm on fire. And my friend, when you get the fire of the Holy Ghost, you will get undignified too. Say amen. Some of you are way too dignified. Way too dignified. You care too much about what people think. You care too much about how you look. If you care more about how you look than receiving the Holy Ghost, you're not hungry. That's all I can say. A hungry man doesn't give a flying leap what anybody else thinks. A hungry man has one agenda, to get that food. And when you're hungry for the Holy Ghost, everything else in your life will come second to that. You will desire him more than the air you breathe. You will desire him more than the food you eat. You will desire him more than your dignity. You will desire him more than your reputation. You will desire him more than your ministry. You will desire him more than anything. But the world, it's true. They will look at you and look down their nose and they'll say, it's one of those crazy Pentecostals. Oh, my friend, don't worry. I'll tell you what you do. Let that unbelieving skeptic, let him go to a football game. What's the big sports team here in Jacksonville? The Jaguars. That's the big one. Oh, the Gators. <clears throat> see, look it. I see the fanatics coming out already. You follow that unbelieving mocker down to the stadium and watch as the Florida Gators run the winning touchdown that wins the game in overtime. And then you'll make a discovery. Everybody burns. Everybody burns. Some people burn for sports. Some people burn for money. Some people burn for popularity and power and sex and style and fashion. But everybody burns for something. The difference between us and them is that we burn for something that matters. Renowned international evangelist Reinhard Bonnke invites you to break your bonds and encounter the meaning and miracles of the Spirit. Holy Spirit, Revelation, and Revolution is a book you will not put down. As you read from cover to cover, you will see who the Holy Spirit is and what He is meant to do in us and through us. You will learn how the Holy Spirit is God in action on earth. When you call today to make your gift of $20 or more, you will receive your copy of Holy Spirit, Revelation, and Revolution. Your donation will help spread the gospel to millions of souls in the continent of Africa. And for a gift of $35 or more, we would like to include My Hope is in You, an inspirational CD filled with powerful praise and worship songs that come directly from our impartation breakfast meetings around America. Don't miss this opportunity to get your copy of Holy Spirit, Revelation, and Revolution for your gift of $20 or more, or include the worship CD, My Hope is in You, for $35 or more. Just call now and prepare to be amazed at what God can do. Amen. My friend, I hope that that message on the Holy Spirit was a blessing to you. I know that the Holy Spirit wants you to have the experience of the Holy Spirit in your own life. And what I'd like to do today is I'd like to send this book to you for your gift of $20 or more. This is a book about the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit Revelation and Revolution, written by our founder, my mentor, evangelist Reinhard Bonnke. And I, I promise you that as you read this book, as I have done a couple of times now, you will see things and have revelation on things in the spirit that you've never had before. I know it will be a blessing, so make sure you call in and get your copy today. Now, in front of me here, there are a stack of prayer requests that have been sent in from all over the place. Some of you have sent in these requests. and. There are serious needs represented here, but the wonderful news is that the Holy Spirit is able to read each and every one, and He's able to transcend time and space to meet each and every need. So right now, if you have a need in your life, this is what I want you to do. Just in faith, spread your hands out, stretch them towards that television set. 
and let's pray together. Father, I thank you in the mighty name of Jesus for your power and your virtue that comes now to heal and to touch and to meet every need. Lord, I thank you for physical healing to be manifest right now. I rebuke sickness and disease, and I command it to go right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I speak to every demonic spirit, spirits of infirmity, spirits of torment, and I command them to go in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you that peace and rest comes into the life of each one of these, your children that are watching right now. And Lord, I pray that you would meet every need, especially those that have financial needs, Lord, that you would meet those needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. We give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. My friend, if you have sent in your prayer request today, as promised earlier, I'm sending you one of these Acts 1912 prayer cloths. We've prayed over these, and I believe that as you receive them and, and lay them on the body of someone who's sick or diseased, that deliverance and healing is coming to them. Now, I want to tell you about something very exciting that's happening in our ministry. The Lord has spoken to evangelist Reinhard Bonnke, who, are, who is our founder, and said to him that there is a mighty move of the Holy Spirit coming to the, the United States of America. And so we have been going from city to city, from state to state, all across the country. That means we're coming very soon to a city near you. And I hope that you could be a part of this crusade because I believe it's going to be the beginning, the spark that starts a forest fire that burns across this nation. The fires of revival, may they come. And I hope that you'll be a part of it. I'll be looking forward to seeing you at an upcoming crusade in your area very soon. God bless you. Bye-bye. We are all guilty and we all need salvation. Today is your day of salvation. All hail the power of Jesus. The preceding program has been made possible by the friends and partners of Christ for All Nations.